Welcome to the Nerdstalker Tech Week Update Podcast. I am Adolfo Ferranda here. You can reach me. I'm at Nerdstalker on Twitter. And who am I here with? It's got to be here. It's Greg Laurie, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter. How you doing, man? It's been Dude, a while. Good. Episode 44. Here we are. Yeah. I, I love it. I love it. Let's let's let's. I, I, we're getting close to the end of the year. Aren't yeah, we? we're that close. We're that close to the holidays here. Uh, Speaking of uh, winter season, uh, there, there's a story coming up that I saw there on Twitter from you. Uh, uh, Google's uh, winter cleaning. What's going on with winter that? Winter cleaning. Yeah. So now we see, uh, you know, uh, Sergey and and Larry uh, continuing the culling. <laughs> right. The laser focus uh, and job suggested that they do. Yeah. So last January. Uh, uh, you know, from the Google blog here, they say they uh, renewed their resolution to focus on creating beautiful, useful products, blah, 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 right? So essentially, they're killing okay. a bunch of stuff. So they're telling you here, on January 4th, two th 2013, they'll be shutting down several less popular Google Calendar features. Uh, you'll be uh, unable to create new reservable times on your calendar through appointment slots, but existing appointment slots will continue working for one year. In addition, uh, okay. they'll, discontinue two, they'll discontinue two calendar labs, uh, Smart scheduler uh, is what it's called. Uh, they recommend f something called find a time view or suggested times okay. as an alternative. And uh, they're getting rid of add gadget uh, by URL. Uh, finally, check your calendar via SMS and create, <coughs> excuse me, create event via SMS, Gvent. Uh, US only features will, will for creating and checking meetings by texting information to Google will be discontinued today, um, as most users prefer mobile calendar apps. Google Sync uh, also is, is going to be killed. Essentially, it was designed really? uh, to allow uh, access to Gmail and calendar apps via uh, Microsoft Exchange Active Sync protocol. Uh, that'll be replaced with CardDAV, you know, which means uh, CalDAV and all that stuff. Uh, IMAP, CardDAV, blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, so odd to see uh, Google Sync go away, but, uh, you know, it's it's a goner. And uh, in addition to Google Sync, they're discontinuing Google Calendar Sync, uh, which makes sense. And, um, yeah, and they're also ending service for Sync ML, <coughs> which is used by smaller, older uh, mobile devices. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue tracker data API allows clients applications to view and update issues on project hosting on Google, Google code. And in the form of Google data API feeds, uh, they'll shut down the issue tracker API on June 14th, 2013. And finally punch duh. So that's punch with the letter D no E D right. Punch. D. Yeah. Punch. Um, duh. Is an app that keeps loyalty punch cards on your smartphone. Say goodbye to that, suckers. On June on June seventh, uh, it's it's a bye bye. So uh, you know that was that would give you uh, you know redeem rewards, et cetera, et cetera, with uh, certain uh, uh, shops and things like that. Um, is essentially going to be killed. I think they acquired that at some oh, point, man. and they're going to snuff it out. So. Wow. Talk go. about winter cleaning. I, I know, can't wait right? for spring. Uh, most of the show today is going to be on Google, so we got a lot to talk about, and I won't uh, delay this stuff. anymore, man. So how about you? More Google with you. Uh, they don't plan to build apps for Windows Phone 8? Oh, man. Let me tell you. This is interesting. So JB Con thanks to JB Conliffe of Gizmodo for this. I caught that the other day. And and, and so, you know, if you've been holding out for Gmail or Drive, or drive on uh, your Windows Phone 8, uh, yeah, out of luck. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So uh, Google announced that it has no plans to roll out uh, Windows 8, uh, uh, Windows Phone 8 uh, software for uh, major Google apps. Can you believe it? I, I Wow. Well, I don't believe it. I, I guess I do believe it. But, mm -hmm. but anyway, um, you know, quoting... Uh, Quoting uh, Clay uh, Baver, uh, uh, product managing director at uh, Google Apps, uh, he said, uh, we have no plans to build out uh, Windows apps. Uh, we are very careful about where we invest and where we go with uh, where the users are. But they're not on Windows Phone or Windows 8. Mm. I love it. And if that changes... We would invest there, of course. Wow. Uh, so, you know, can you imagine that? So, yeah, so, yeah. So... So is that is that turf protection or reality so. or both? I, I think okay. I think it's absolutely turf protection, and I think that they recognize that the only other real development company that can put up a fight uh, for services on that scale is Microsoft. I don't, you know, obviously Apple's been a complete failure in the services department. You know, cloud kind of services in comparison to Google. You know. Google apps, mm -hmm. Google services, and mm -hmm. things like that. And Microsoft has an answer for all of these things. They have, you know, uh, for Google 
docs or that kind of thing. They have Office Cloud, right? 365, right. whatever, Office 365. They have, right. uh, what is it, Mesh or, or SkyDrive, actually, uh, which, Sky is, Drive, which is yeah. an answer to Google you know, Drive to some extent. And uh, yeah, so they have an answer to, to all this, you know, obviously, uh, who we see, uh, office.com or, what, or outlook.com, what, whatever they are, they're the answer to Google, Gmail and that kind of thing, right? So I think absolutely um, uh, that this, the, they definitely want to keep Microsoft sort of where they're at in the, uh, in this space right now. Well, yeah, and so I guess they focus on um, obviously Android and iOS, right? Yeah. So, right. And fortunately for them, right. Windows Phone is at what three seven percent. So, well, they're doing a good yeah, job. I think you, <laughs> I think you're going to be talking a little bit about more Google stuff later. Um, but uh, and you know, I it, it you know. I, I, the sales are, are are pitiful for for the service. So, um, you know, the other thing that will be driving this right now and during the Christmas season. But you know, we'll wait for the final numbers to come in. But yeah. it doesn't look good yeah. so far. So, well, let's get into it right now, yeah. man. How about uh, yeah? Yeah, so let's do it. Google Maps on well, iOS. On? Everyone knows uh, Google. The Google Maps app has is the number one iOS app. And I hear, actually, John Gruber is hearing that Apple executives are not happy about it whatsoever because they're getting, uh, you know, Google's getting rave reviews and everything. And there's been some conspiracy <laughs> theories also roaming around the internet saying this was all plot planned by Apple to get a better uh, Google iOS application, full on app, uh, you know, app. Um, <laughs> Oh, please. <laughs> Which is, sounds crazy business to me, but, you know, some people are saying this. Uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, you know, it's funny how dependent they are on each other, right? Google's very dependent yeah. on Apple. It's it's a strange relationship these two companies have. And uh, and Apple really needs that Maps application, too, apparently. You know, look at, look at all of the interest, um, warranted or not, right? To, to this and it's a fine application I, I check it out too i still use Waze for my gps that's just what i do yes but uh, right. uh right. little things and rotify also has improved uh, also to answer a lot of the uh sort of public transit type of options but google has it all wrapped into one uh, application on, on the iphone which is quite nice too uh if you choose to to do so it's i i recommend you checking it out shit install it it's free app so why not but hey, let's go into let's, let's, let's bring up uh, Windows uh, yeah, eight yeah, again yeah. and uh, Surface. Let's talk about Surface so sales. A huh? lot of the sales numbers, you know, Microsoft hasn't released uh, official numbers, and uh, you know they haven't said much about sales really. And you so a lot of people are reading into this, and there's lots of talk, you know, from uh, suppliers and from retail people, etc. Um, and there's a lot of ways you can skew these sort of these uh, uh, inputs, right? Um, mm. such to make it look different ways, right? So Microsoft saying, we're completely sold out, but then everyone's saying, well, they only allotted a very small amount of like things they like only surfaces. Yeah, yeah, or so <laughs> forth, right? And, uh, you know, and then you hear other complaints about like pricing, the quality of what's happening also, uh, real interest, uh, you know, user interest inquiries into these things. Um, yeah, so it's not, it's, you could take it in different ways, but overall, it looks from what I'm hearing, uh, people are saying the sales are not good, right? For um, for the Surface right now, Surface RT in, in specific. Uh, uh, everyone's hoping, well, not everyone, but people are hoping. I, I know there's a lot of uh, uh, things uh, being really they're rooting for uh, the Surface Pro. Uh, Microsoft is, and uh, you know this thing has got to uh, catch on for them to uh, right. sort of move on um my theory you know and i'll go back to my crazy theory and i what i tell okay. everyone is i i think microsoft is um i think microsoft's future is really dependent on ios and android at this point really uh, instead of their own platform now it's wow. such, um i think they need to get everything on, on ios and android and i know that they are getting out uh office mm -hmm. right uh, I'm hearing right. dates of like uh, March of next year, uh, something I, I can't believe I can't remember if it's March or May of next year um, 
for an office uh, release. I know Apple's uh, has a policy of a 30% policy, right, with developers such that they get 30% uh, right. of all sales. Right. Uh, right. Microsoft obviously doesn't want uh, Apple to get 30% of all office sales, uh, period. Well, do they have a choice? Right, right. <laughs> I mean, it so, sounds like another codependent relationship we're talking about again, huh? That's, yeah, I know. I know there's a lot of people asking uh Supposedly, when <laughs> although there's a ton of iPads already sold, and iPad is the biggest tablet uh, in the world right now, and demand for right. it is, is still right. it's the number one Christmas uh, holidays list uh, item want for for um, Americans, or I, th I think globally at this point. But um, wow, but but they're saying you know people ask you know can I can I have an office on my iPad? And the answer really is no right now. Can I use Word on my iPad, right? No, not really. you got to use uh, Pages or you have to use Google Docs or something like that, right? Um, and that's <laughs> not, that, for, for oddly enough, for a lot of business people, that's an unacceptable answer, right? They just have to have right. Word. Um, right. So there could be some dependency on both. You know, Apple may need this suite and uh, Microsoft also may need uh, well, obviously needs Apple too. It needs iOS, right? Because they need those sales, right? Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Right now, we you can say, oh, they don't need it because they make so much money in enterprise. But the the future is not what the past is, right? The future is right. These things, these tablets we're seeing, these phones, they're going to be in all boardrooms. They're going to be in all these meetings now. Um, real workers are going to be using these things um, on a day to day basis all the time. Um, some are already. Um, so, well, I, I I heard I heard uh, uh, some numbers the other day uh, as far as I read uh, that Microsoft, you know, I, you know, back in 2000, a, a, a bulk of their sales was enterprise, right, or businesses, right, right, yeah. And now it's only like 10, 15 percent. I mean, it, wow. it flipped completely. Wow. I mean, you could see why they're just reeling right now. Yeah. Um, right. And, then, and, and so, then you see things like tablet and. Uh, and well, we call them mobile devices outselling desktop computers, right, <laughs> by right. ton. Now and, and Microsoft isn't a hardware company. I, I think that's the other thing that, yeah. that that you know. I think they haven't proven to be a hardware company, though. I, you know, I think they're trying to be, mm -hmm. um, but they haven't proven to be uh, in the past. So yep. you know, that's kind of an interesting one, right? Yeah. And in then a uh, story breaks today, um, which I'll mention here that Fortune uh, put out here, um, uh, stating that the Surface is more expensive to build than the uh, iPad. Right. So uh, Fortune <laughs> uses some data from IHS uh, iSupply to show that the uh, 32 gigabyte surface, Surface's screen processor, battery RAM, and storage cost $271, or $22 less than the same components of a 32 gigabyte version of the new iPad. Um, what this means is that based solely on the cost of its components, the Surface would haul mm -hmm. in a profit of $315 for every 32 gigabyte Surface sold while Apple would make $296 for every new iPad Interesting. sold. Really? This doesn't take into account manufacturing and marketing costs, of course, uh, so they can't look at, at it as a definitive count for each tablet's gross margin. But uh, mm. we're, we're seeing here, and I'm hearing more and more, um, you know, even Microsoft pundits say uh, Microsoft is trying to be Apple. And they're uh, essentially, it looks like they're trying to clone sort of the business model in a sense. Well, here. Uh, well you know, it's just, yeah, you know, I wish them luck, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what else can we say, right? Competition is good, like uh, we always say on the show, eh, Greg? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, you always kick my ass, but uh, that's okay. I keep on trying. So, <laughs> speaking of kicking ass, employers. Uh, so oh, more employees man. with uh, personal mobile devices means more problems in the workspace. This is a fascinating. Uh, uh, piece oh, here, it right? is. It is. Tell and that's why I wanted to talk about this. So, you know, this is uh, from uh, Neil Schaefer at Windmill Marketing, uh, his his blog. I just caught it off there and I thought it was just interesting because, you know, our company uh, just went through that. I, I helped uh, design an employee handbook, which has a social media component. And we'll talk about that a little later. So, but, um, you know, uh, one of the guest writers uh, for Neil Schaefer's blog, Windmill Marketing Blog, uh, you know, they talked about, uh, you know, shoppers are buying smartphones for or smart devices for, for Christmas, you know, mini iPads, iPhones, Kindles, you know, whatever. And, and you know, you know, when you carry your laptop, you're going to probably carry a second device, whether it's a phone or, or another uh, pad or something like that. Right. So so what, what happens when employees bring it to the office time, you know, when they have their new toys at the beginning of the year, you know, and. 
And 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 this story kind of brings up, you know, what should employers do to protect their workplace? Now, you know, I'd like to get your perspective because you work a lot on the enterprise. You have, you, you know, you work for an agency or you know, a a kind of a. You know, I think the security has to be fairly tight in your area, but, you know, I'll talk about my company, which is a little more creative and maybe a little looser. But, uh, you know, this guy is suggesting they, they create and enforce a policy prohibiting the use of personal devices to conduct business for the company. So, you know, the companies I worked for in the past, you know, when Blackberries were part of the, the, the business cycle of buying a smartphone, um, we had had two phones. We had a personal phone and we had the company phone, and you couldn't add anything to your other phone. You know, um, that was it. You know, yeah, tough. You know, you had to carry two phones, which I think is ridiculous, Mm -hmm. but, you know, that's me, right? Mm -hmm. And basically, you lock out any features that you, you know, basically, you can't have the employee add any features without IS's approval Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. installation procedures, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and they go on in the story to talk about social media, so let's shift to that real quick. I, I mean, you know, basically, if your handbook says that uh, they prohibit the use of social media devices on company time, um, that's been kind of struck mm. down by, um, you know, a, a couple um, judgments. Mm. So they, they felt that that was kind of ambiguous. So you have to change it to uh, you, you prohibit the use of social media during work time, mm. which, um, you know, I'll talk about what, what we do. Um, we put a social media uh, policy together, and, and and I thought it was quite liberal for being a, a, a creative agency like what we have. Mm-hmm. We said that if you use your social media during work time, mm-hmm. you know, I won't say company time, work time, it, it subtracts from uh, your your allowed personal time. So mm-hmm. every four hours, five hours, you're allowed ten minutes of break, and then. You, you know, after six hours of working or minimum of four or five hours of working, you're also allowed a one hour break. Right. So mm-hmm. so we're, we're saying, yeah, OK, hey, go if you want to use it on your personal devices that aren't company owned, no problem. But that's your you're using your personal time that we allow you to have to do that. So right. I, I thought that was quite liberal. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that was bad or good because these are my own opinions, right, not sure. that of the company. Yes. <laughs> good man. <laughs> Thank you. I had to say good my. Learning. I had to say that also. <laughs> I, I learned. I learned from my friend over here. So, so well, let's get past that. Let's we'll talk about some fun stuff here. Let's get into speed round. Speed round. Speed round. Speed round. <laughs> anyway. What do you got up there, buddy? Yeah, man. So Eric Schmidt of Google defends uh, Google's tax avoidance uh, strategy and robots taking jobs away. So essentially what's happening here is uh, uh, Google is uh, basically has these offshore accounts, right, uh, where they're um, tr- trying to show, you know, do what all a lot of these companies are doing by uh, uh, using these tax avoidance strategies to shelter profits uh, so they can uh, make more money, more money. Uh, they are a big, big uh, practitioner of this whatsoever. He says, "Hey, it's we're not breaking any laws, so uh, mm, you know, let us have our money." And uh, also, they were people were telling them, you know, about the future and how um, uh, more and more robots are apparently going to be taking jobs away. Uh, we're looking at things when you hear things about Made in America is a big movement now. Uh, we mm, hear about mm. Apple bringing some some work back uh, to the United States to create some. Um, Computers, there's been some talk that a lot of those jobs will be robotics probably eventually anyways for a lot of this uh, manufacturing type of stuff. Um, And he's totally okay with that. His claim is that education will save it, right? So uh, as long as the youth is educated properly, that uh, we don't need to be worried about robots uh, taking our jobs anytime soon. Whoa. Wow. So Greg, speed round for you, man. And it's all right. In the smartphones, uh, this is a co- cool story that I picked up uh, via uh, SAI, uh, you know, Business Insider. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so uh, over in Belgium, some scientists had finally taken a crucial step towards building screens onto contact lenses. Can you imagine that? Wow. Yeah, forget Google Glasses, yeah. guys. We got contact lenses now. So, uh, awesome. you know, a team of researchers at uh, Ghent University built an LCD screen over wow. a curved contact glass. And um, they used, uh, you know, what they call conductive polymers uh, to make a really kind of a simple LCD device, but, you know, it really is a proof of concept. Um, 
you know, especially when you want to put uh, something like that over a thin uh, spherical curved substrate. Well, so cool. you know, and it used to be always flat, right? I mean, you only could do this thing on flat surfaces. So I think the big thing here is that they actually could do it on a curved surface. And, and you know, that just opens up, you know, new new avenues to eventually getting us to have – a computer screen over our and lens. I wow. mean, you know, you can change your eye color on the fly, maybe. Uh, that's another application. Boy, yeah, I don't know why it, I would do Google that. Google Glass sound lame. You're right, man. Gee. Oh, man. Anyway, let's go speed route for you, man. Yeah, What's man. the next sentence? Uh, Boing Boing is reporting that Enigma hero uh, Alan Turing should be uh, pardoned, leading sti- scientist claim. So as uh, some of you know, um, Alan Turing was a code breaker. Uh, back in World War II uh, uh, in the UK, mm. you know, for, for the UK, cracked tons of, like, uh, the German Enigma, right, uh, uh, code, and and uh, all, just an all-around genius. And uh, unfortunately, um, back at that point in the UK, um, homosexuality was illegal. Um, he was imprisoned, and I, I believe later he was in a mental hospital, and I think he might have taken his own life. Uh, I think the it was just a really bad, bad, sad, sad story for a man who is uh, essentially a, a, a hero in history. And um, some of these leading scientists um, are, are are saying, you know, hey, it's t- it's time we pardon this guy. I know there have been some uh, comments I've seen too. And Stephen Hawkins is one of the leading uh, scientists who's who's saying this also as well. Uh, big names that are saying this. Uh, and I know there's been some comments saying that this law should just be overturned altogether and to not even mm. pardon the guy. So, so because uh, a pardon is still sort of like he's just pardoned from what was a crime. And, and some of the comments are saying, let's just reverse this, whatever the law of that, of that period, whatever, or just strike it down, nullify it such that um, wow. there was nothing ever uh wrong to begin with with this whole thing so a very uh uh interesting story and there's a petition up uh right now for uh his his pardoning so if you're interested in it uh go to boing boing and uh, you know check it out um uh very interesting story so greg speed round speed round speed round well let's talk about the 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 delta app that california doesn't like uh (laughs) i thought this was kind of interesting too um so uh a few weeks ago, uh, the California's attorney general filed a first-ever privacy lawsuit um, against the maker of a smartphone application. Uh, really, it's a move that could probably sh- uh, shape how the the app industry handles personal information now. Um, as you know, uh, California has a uh, privacy law that they passed recently that uh, prohibits uh, you know companies not having at least showing the privacy policy on your mobile app device if they're collecting personal information like your credit card over the app or other other information. Um, so the Attorney General of California, uh, Camilla Harris, um, filed a, a civil lawsuit um, against Delta Airlines. You know, yeah. I, I guess they're going to be the poster child for this one. Um, and uh, – you know, and so, you know, even the Merck News, you know, I think uh, mentioned that, you know, the action is really part of a high profile campaign that the attorney general's office, uh, Harris's office, is waging to uh, to make business adopt private, the privacy policies and, and post them on their mobile apps. I, I think that's really what it yeah, is. Uh, let's move on, my friend. Move on to the tips of the week. Tip tab. How are we doing there? Tip tab. Tip tab. Tip tab. Yeah, man. So my my uh, tip of the week is is an iOS application. It's actually um, a Mac OS X application as well called uh, mm. Fantastical. Uh, so um, they recently uh, the the team at uh, Flexibits re- st- released uh, the famous Fantastical Fantastical desktop application for the iOS device, your iPhone. Uh, it's really really awesome. I was using a calendar app on um, Apple the desktop called uh, Busy Cal, which is a great um, desktop right. calendar application as well. Right. Uh, but I started using Fantastic Cal. Um, it makes it super easy to add any type of events into your into your um, calendar uh, via a little widget at the top of your screen. You just click this little icon fantastic cal calendar icon and the great thing about it is they use something called yeah. natural language kind of something like that so you can type in something like okay. um coffee with greg tomorrow at two and just type that in that sentence in and it automatically puts in 2 p.m you know coffee you know with greg and, and if i said at starbucks in on whatever at somewhere it would put in the location as well um, and tomorrow, it would know tomorrow is tomorrow and put in the exact date of tomorrow. 
as well in the thing automatically and then you just nice hit save and you're good to go so very very cool stuff yeah you can obviously do this you know verbally i think there's siri in in, uh, integration as well i'm not sure i haven't played with that bit yet um but looks very cool cool. so uh check it out uh you can check it out at flexibits.com that's f-l-e-x-i-b-i-t-s.com it's a fantastic cow how about you greg wow your tip hey well you know uh, holiday season. Uh, everyone's going to be getting some new devices, I'm sure, yeah. under the tree. So uh, check out Digital Trends Best Android Apps. I'm an Android guy, so I'll, I'll, I'll plug Android here because it's a cool show. Um, and if you get one of those nice uh, phones or tablets, you know, check out this thing. You know, they have uh, four areas which they kind of uh, told you about, uh, kind of pick the best uh, utilities. Uh, there's there's some that we actually talked about in this show over the last year, as well as uh, some things we saw in SF New Tech, uh, which were the media sponsor for. So uh, we got Dolphin Browser. That was at SF New Tech. Awesome. Uh, that's a good, nice little browser. Um, we got uh, Widgets Sold, um, which creates widgets on your phone. I thought that was kind of neat. Cool. Uh, Swift Key, we yeah, saw at SF New Tech. Very nice. Uh, you, uh, you you spoke very highly of that. Yeah. Um, so that's in the utilities area. They have, they have four areas of fun, productivity, and video, uh, some of the ones in the fun category. Uh, you talked about this at one of the other shows uh, probably in the spring, uh, the Xbox Smart Glass, uh, yes. uh, which allows you to control your devices with your Android device. Um, Flickster, find out what's happening in movie yeah. theaters. Uh, in your lo- local area, and, and layer, yeah. uh, which layers information over pics that you take over your smartphone. Uh, productivity, hotels tonight, I think, was another SF New Tech uh, presenter. Um, you know, get get some day r- rooms at uh, drastically reduced prices because uh, they're just sell- selling their overflow rooms out of their hotels yeah. um, at the last minute. Um, shopping list out of milk. I thought that was something that was kind of yeah, cool. cool. And, you know, they, the video, music, and books ones, uh, Flipboard, which presented at SMD Tech. Um, there were a couple others, but check that out. I think it's a great list, especially after Christmas when you get your new Android devices, whether it's a smartphone or a tablet. Um, and uh, download some of these apps. I think it'll it'll make your life a lot easier, funner, and 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 more efficient. That's so, right. Anyway, very cool, man. That's my tip. So, what for events the week, we got uh, coming up, holidays. man? Dude, uh, well, I think uh, SF New Tech's coming up in uh, January 7th. Uh, they haven't really announced what exactly what the show is going to be that, but that's going to be a new year, new show. Yeah, it'll be cool. Uh, twice sure. a month again. Yeah, man. Yeah, and, and we'll see how all that's uh, going to plan nice. out next year. And but we uh, got Macro too, bro. The, hey, dude. Yes. Uh, we are uh, media. We got, uh, yeah, we're media coverage for uh, Macworld. We are, yeah, doing it. So check it out uh, at MacworldIWorld.com. That's MacworldIWorld.com. That is this January 31st through February 2nd at the uh, lovely Moscone Center West here in San Francisco. Please come to that because it's going to be awesome. And me and Greg are going to be everywhere on that floor uh covering oh, tons and tons of stuff and we're, we're actually going to be in the workshops we're going to be all over the freaking place in that thing um learning a lot and talking to a lot of people and getting a lot of great content for all of you to uh to absorb so remember january 31st yeah, well, through february 2nd of uh, next year 2013 here in lovely san francisco nice. it's uh mac world just a reminder, uh, you can suggest some stories for us uh, using the hashtag NRDSTK. That's hashtag NRDSTK. You visit our stories and interviews on nerdstalker.com. There's a lot of good content that Adolfo posts as well as and me and some other right. uh, guest uh, writers for Nerdstalker Media. Right. Uh, and download our podcast uh, via iTunes audio and uh, video and give us a rating. I like that. Anyway, visit our YouTube channel, and Nerdstalker TV, and you can catch us on the 24 by 7 channel on i broadcast tv for a nerd stalker um also catch our new um, podcast that we're doing in, in in addition to this tech week uh, update podcast it's called social time tv so that's with sean charles and, and me uh doing some uh later latest breaking social media news uh, across on a google hangout so anyway Anyway, how do we get a hold of you, my friend? You can get a hold of me, Adolfo, at nerdstalker.com. That's A-D-O-L-F-O, at nerdstalker.com. If you want to email me or check me out on Twitter, at nerdstalker, feel free to reach out, say hello, uh, give your input. I would be, uh, I would love to have some dialogue with you. Uh, Greg, how about you? 
you can catch me uh, on email at uh, nerds, I mean, socialgreg at nerdstalker.com. Or you can catch me on Twitter here at socialgreg. And uh, hey, man, it's been a great show. Uh, well, we're going to do a wrap up show, aren't we? Yeah, uh, at the yeah, end of the yeah. Year, don't, shh, don't give it all away yet. Yeah. Oh, a, lot of, a lot of more stuff for you people coming up. A lot of, a lot of stuff to come. So uh, thanks for listening yeah, and yeah. thanks for watching, everyone. Appreciate it. Okay, okay. Be careful out there. Happy holidays. <laughs>